Hey, it's Matt here. Today we're talking tips for better vibe coding. And specifically, we're going to talk about 10 prompting tips that I've found have helped me build better applications. Now, if you don't know me, I lead developer relations at Replit. And this video is going to use Replit as an example, but these tips apply to any platform or really any instance where you're interacting with AI. So let's jump right into it. And these tips first are gonna follow largely from a prompting tip uh, infographic I put out on X. This was inspired in part by Google's white paper written by Lee Boonstra, which is really good um, on prompt engineering. You should give it a read if you have a chance. Uh, it's pretty fun. Now, my first tip is to checkpoint. What are checkpoints? Well, on Replit, we're gonna go over to Replit here. Checkpoints, you can think about them exactly like checkpoints in like a video game, right? They're a safe place where you know that your application works or you can roll back to at any time. And that's how I like to use checkpoints when I'm building. It's like once I get to this point, I test my application. And if it works, I know that point I can always go back to. I know that I can experiment a little bit more or try out new things and not worry about losing my data or losing anything in my application. And so on the left here, we can see right, these checkpoints that agent's making as it builds, as it does all this stuff. And at any time, I can click roll back and I can restore not only the files or agent's memory for the application, but actually the database and the, the data the application's built on. So I never have to worry about messing anything up. I never have to worry about losing data. I can always go back to those checkpoints. Now, how do I use those when I build? Well, I use them to build in chunks and then use rollbacks, which is the, our term for reverting to a checkpoint, um, to restore that data. Now, if you're building with another tool, this is just like Git. So just use version control. Use um, you know all the methods that you have to uh, save your files so that you can go back to them at any time. But we make it really easy in Replit to do that. Now, a part of this is avoiding failed prompts or repeating the same thing. If you say, hey, fix it, right? An agent doesn't fix it. Uh, you're going to have to think about what to do differently so that you're not um, just doing the same thing over and over again. So you have to see what works, see what doesn't, um, and go from there. My second thing, we have to debug our applications. Now, I think a lot of us take this for granted if we're software engineers that we just have this skill. A lot of people don't. And so what does it mean to debug an application? It's the same thing if you're trying to figure out why your lamp doesn't work, which is my example in the top right. Um, you have to start from first principles and say, why doesn't it work? Well, is it plugged in? If, it's, if it isn't plugged in, you just plug it in, right? That's the easy solution. If it is plugged in and it's not working, maybe the next logical the thing to look for is the bulb being uh, burned out. And then you'd replace the bulb, right? So we have to find the root causes methodically for our application, starting from first principles. And so some ways that I do this in Replit, um, you might have an application that's running. Let's take a look at this application. This is one I built for a perplexity demo. Um, and we're going to use this throughout the... Um, throughout this video. Uh, but if this wasn't working, what are some places I could look to understand why it's not working? Maybe I look at the dev tools. There's some logging here. Maybe I look at the console, see what's going on on the back end. Maybe there are no messages. So I ask agent to implement more debugging so that I can check the messages, right? These are ways of understanding what's going on in my application. These are ways of uh, getting the entire view of the app so that I can start diagnosing why those things aren't working. So debugging is important. We'll talk about this a bit more, but when you're debugging, you want to give LLMs relevant context. You can find that in the console, in the debug logs, and then we start high and drill down. And, you know, a lot of times I advocate for very specific prompts, you know, very uh, detail rich prompts. But if something doesn't work, it's totally fine as a first pass to say, agent, hey, this thing isn't working, fix it, right? Start high level. If that doesn't work, then you start to drill down. Now, what's next? Discover. I think this one's super important, right? We don't know what we don't know. If I'm building an app and I want to add a feature, there might be a framework out there that does exactly what I want it to. But if I don't mention it, AI might not use it. Maybe it's new. Maybe um, you know the LLM doesn't think about that. Maybe it tries to build the feature out in the first place. Sort of the same thing about like speaking with a junior engineer, speaking with someone who's new to a system. You could uh, spend weeks as a junior engineer like building this thing, but it turns out there's already a framework to do it and you just wasted a couple of weeks. So um, do your own research. Use Google. 2025, nobody's telling anyone to use Google, but use Google to do searches like stay um, in touch online in communities to learn about new ways of doing things and ask AI, hey, what are some good ways to do X, Y, Z? Are there any good packages or frameworks that might solve this problem? Um, a lot of AI tools like Claude now have web, web, web search, so they can actually search Google for you. Uh, but be sure to discover, go out, explore, um, learn about new ways of doing things and the best ways of doing things.
talk to people. Talk to people. That's important. Don't just talk to computers. I talk to computers and I'm boring. So, you know, this is what you get when you talk to computers too much. Um, next, experiment. We're, we live in a new frontier. This is actually really exciting. No one has ever built with AI before. As an educator, it's exciting for me to talk to you because everything that I discover is almost brand new. Um, and that means you have to test different prompts, test different formats for communicating with AI and learn for yourself what works and what doesn't. Now in this video, I'm hopefully going to help you learn those things, uh, but for what you're trying to build, it's completely different from anything anyone else is trying to build. So for your app, certain things might work, certain things might not. You have to try different things. And that means that failure is actually okay and expected. The thing that most people don't talk about with software engineering is that engineers fail all the time. I have failed so many times in my life, it's embarrassing. But I've learned from those failures, and that's actually how, how most people build. So when you're vibe coding, when you're building an app with AI, try something, your app's probably going to break. That's okay. Use checkpoints, roll it back, try something different. You have to experiment. Failure is okay, and failing helps you learn so that you don't make the same mistakes and you can move faster in the future. So small changes matter. Tweak your prompts. Failure is okay. We're in a new frontier. These things are expected. You have to be willing to experiment to build better apps. Next. Instruct. When you're talking to an AI, it's actually a lot like talking to a person, which is like kind of creepy, but also not really. Um, so a really simple tip, use positive instruction. So instead of saying, don't make the padding small, say, please add more padding. Uh, instead of saying, don't do this thing, describe what you would like to see happen. This has just been proven to result in better outcomes with LLMs. Next tip, plan. Think like a PM and engineer. One of the interesting things about building with AI is that you're not just an engineer. You're not just someone that's building. You're also the PM. You're also the designer. You're doing everything in that product delivery life cycle. So break down the requirements, create, create wireframes, create PRDs. Um, I'm actually going to show you some examples here um, of things that I've done when I'm building. So if I go here for that app that I just showed you, here's what I did first. I said, hey, help me create you know, this application. I workshopped this prompt. I thought about some additional features that I might want in the future. And then I even drew out like a little wireframe, kind of, you know, I'm a nerd, I'm doing stuff like this. What you can do then is screenshot it. We can copy that. We can go to replit.com. And then in the prompt box, we could say, hey, you know, make my app look like like that, look like ah, this. It actually works pretty reliably. Agent is getting much better at interpreting those wireframes. And by supplying both a wireframe and a descriptive PRD, you can get some really good results. So up next, we have select. What do I mean? I mean that it's important to give a lot of information to AI, a lot of context, error logs, packages, scraped websites, etc. But What's even more important is being really selective and making sure that's high quality information that follows a cohesive line of thought. It's like talking to somebody. I use this example often, right? Like if I'm talking to you and I give you a hundred things to do and they're actually conflicting uh, instructions in those things, you're going to be really confused. You're not going to know what I want. Uh, you might do the wrong thing. If I give you a very cohesive, minimalist approach to what I want done, and I'm very specific, um, you're more likely to help me out. Uh, you're more, more more likely to understand my instructions. Same thing with AI. Be selective with your prompts. Make sure that you follow a clear line of thought, and you're much more likely to get better outputs. Now, what next one? Show. This is important. Use examples. And you can use all sorts of examples with AI. This kind of falls from Discover as well. So if you discover something really cool and you want to integrate it into your project, whether that's a design, a pa like a page you like a lot, you take a screenshot. If it's um, a code snippet you find online, you can grab those snippets. Attach the screenshots, attach the wireframes. I just showed you how to do that. Mix human and LLM inputs. This is an interesting one. Sometimes if an LLM is having trouble implementing something, but I have an idea conceptually of how to implement it, I'll just implement it in the code and then message the LLM and be like, okay, agent, now do th this thing the way I did it in the code. What do I mean by that? Let's uh, pop over here. Let's go back to my um, my app. One of the cool things about Replit is that this is just all code, right? So if you know a little bit of code, if you're comfortable digging around, you could poke into some of these components, the join session. You can make little modifications or like rearrange things. And then you could prompt agent, follow up again and say, hey, you know, do this thing a little differently this time. Um, 
what are some other things when I, I mean here? Like, okay, we attached a wireframe. Maybe we want to add documentation for a cool package or implement some new feature that you found out about online. Well, if you go to a website that has like implementation details, this is a, a library for converting like PDFs to Markdown, you can copy that URL, paste it, get the text content, and now we have... Um, all of those implementation details we're passing to the AI. This is useful context. AI is probably going to understand how to install and configure that package better than you did before. You know, the same way if you like the um, uh, design of a website that we attached um, our wireframe, if you like the way a website looks, you can also just take a screenshot of that website by pasting the URL in, uh, and Agent's pretty good at, uh, at adding those details. So... What am I what am I saying here? Attach screenshots, attach wireframes, use examples, mix human and LL inputs to show AI what you're trying to accomplish. It's really good um, at taking those details. Next, simplify. Talked a little bit about this. Keep prompts concise. In the same way you don't want conflicting information, too much information can get confusing. Just like if you're talking to your friend, break your ideas down logically. There are a lot of ways about thinking, about instructing AI, but being logical, being specific. Being minimalist, I find, works really well. Um, and that minimalist approach means that you get more checkpoints. So, hey, do one thing, and we checkpoint it, do the next thing. You know, it's better than trying to do 10 things at once, is what I'm trying to say here. So, simplify your instructions. Work uh, as if you're instructing someone and you don't want them to get confused. Keep your prompts concise. These are all really useful things if you think about the way an LLM works, which is just predicting tokens, essentially, i.e., the words that you use are very important in terms of what the LLM does. Um, next, specify. This is different from simplification. Specification means we want everything to be defined very precisely. You have to consider edge cases. You have to consider um, things that might not work. You have to pay attention to exactly what you want. Now, the example I use here is make my app mobile friendly. Uh, that's at a high level what I might say, but I could say, hey, make my app mobile friendly so that it performs well on an iPhone 16, so that it also performs well on a 5K screen, a desktop screen. And there are specific breakpoints for 4K screens and MacBooks, right? What I'm describing here are different edge cases. And I have to know the term breakpoint. I have to know the term mobile friendly or responsive. These all mean similar things. They're similarly in the lexicon of web development. I'm not a web developer, but I learn these things by prompting with AI, by looking up examples, by doing my research, by understanding what to look for, and solving the hard problems, basically by building apps that broke a lot, and then um, testing them and Googling and asking AI to understand the terms I had to use to make them not break. Now, on Replit, there's some cool shortcuts here for building our app. What we can do in the preview pane, actually, is resize our screen, you know, specifically for making sure things are mobile-friendly. Um, because this preview tab uh, is running in the cloud, we can also open that up in a new browser and inspect the way that things work. Um, that's specifically for mobile friendliness, but we have to be really specific. And a lot of the times that in involves failing. It involves taking the time to understand what we're looking for. Very important. Um, and so these were all 10 tips, actually. If you implement these, we can get into this really positive feedback loop where we have an idea in mind. We have an MVP in mind. We're going to test it out. We might get to an error. We're going to debug it. We're going to checkpoint. And then we're going to implement all of these prompting tips in order to get to the next MVP or feature. Um, and along the way, you're going to fail. Along the way, you're going to learn lessons and learn um, how to think logically, how to solve problems, how to build full stack applications, full stack web apps. Uh, and that's part of the journey. And by creating this content, my goal is to help you bypass um, all of the kind of tricky parts or points where you might get stuck. Because I've gotten stuck a lot. I've failed a lot. My goal here is to help you do that less. Um, and so these were my 10 tips for better vibe coded apps and prompt engineering. Hopefully they help you build the best apps possible. That's my goal. Um, drop me a line in the comments if you have some additional tips or things you found work well. But again, I'm Matt at Replit. This has been 10 tips for vibe coding, how you can build better vibe coded applications. Until next time, peace.